multiplying rational expressions. What I have is I have two fractions. That's what a rational expression means, first of all. It means a fraction. Um, I have two fractions. I'm going to multiply these two fractions together. Now, the way I teach people to do this is, is I, I approach it in a very simplistic manner. Um, it, this is not the fastest way to do it, but it will make the most sense. What happens is I'm, this is, all of this is multiplication, as you can clearly see. Multiply, 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 multiply. So what makes this problem really easy is the fact that I'm going to take 6 times 5, I'm going to get 30. And what I'm going to then do is say times a times a times a, because there are three a's, times b times b. Then I'm going to come over here and say, oh, there was another a, and there was another b. 4 times 6, 24. a times a times a times a times b times b. So again, 4 a's, 1 b here and 1 b here. Now when you look at this problem, you can see all these things are being multiplied together right on top of each other. This makes it very convenient because what you'll say is, okay, an A for an A, an A for an A, an A for an A, and an A for an A. All my A's got crossed out. And it they didn't have to be right above each other. That's one of the things I wanted to point out with this video. A B for a B, a B for a B, uh, and then right here this B didn't have anything else to cross with, so we're going to have to leave it in our answer. Now, the, tw the 30 over the 24, that's a regular fraction. You would just reduce that like normal. You divide both of those by 6. You would get 5 over 4 with this 1B left on top. And there's your answer. Now, I would like to show the shortcut method in applying this problem. Um, here's how you would do it, shortcut method. What you would do is you'd say, all right, since everything's being multiplied together, I'm going to do this, actually, to help uh, keep our thoughts clear. I'm going to cover this side up. All right. So what's going to happen is you see everything's being multiplied together. 6 will cross out with a 6 because they're whole values. 6 divided by 6 is 1. And then what I'll do is this. I'll say, how many A's are in the numerator? You can clearly see that there are four A's in the numerator. So we got an A to the fourth power. How many B's? Two here, one here, there's a B to the third. On the bottom, how many A's? There are four A's and two B's. Okay. The five is still left on top, the four is still left on bottom. So this is what happens. You basically look at the problem and say, How many, you're, you're looking for the biggest one. You're looking for the biggest one. You say, which, is it the numerator? Is it the denominator? Which one of them has more A's or B's? Now, you can clearly see that there are just as many A's and just as many A in the numerator and the denominator. That's why they completely cross out. But when you look at the B's, you say, all right, this B has a power of 3, and this b has a power of 2, there's clearly one more b on top, and that's how we can do very quick arithmetic to say, well, this is only going to have one more b on top. So it's a different way of approaching it. I do think just writing it out will get you your answer. The thing you just got to be concerned about is if they give you like a to the 54th power or b to the 60th power, you don't want to be drawing out all those a's and drawing out all those b's. But um, that should make sure that you multiply all rational expressions that are uh, of this nature very easily. I hope that helps.